This video will discuss total wave function symmetry of the term symbols of homonuclear diatomic molecules. So in the last video we went through several examples for computing the term symbols of homonuclear diatomic molecules, but there's one part that I left off. In addition to the multiplicity and lambda labels, there's another subscript for homonuclear diatomics that we can do in the bottom right, and that is whether the in entire term symbol is gerata or ungerata. So this video will discuss how we determine whether a term symbol is G or U. All right, so we have our individual atomic orbitals. Those are G or U based off of their inversion symmetry. Uh, this sigma is symmetric with respect to inversion, so it gets a G label. This one is anti-symmetric with respect to inversion. I always change my sign when I invert through the origin, so that gets a U label. Pi binding orbitals are ungerata, anti-symmetric. Pi antibonding orbitals are gerata, they are symmetric. So what I need to do is look at what happens when I multiply uh, two functions together to their inversion symmetry. So much like even in odd functions, g times g equals g, symmetric times symmetric equals symmetric, g times u equals u, symmetric times anti-symmetric equals anti-symmetric, and u times u equals g, anti-symmetric times anti-symmetric equals symmetric. So what we're going to do is for every electron in our molecule, we're going to identify whether it is g or u, and we're going to multiply together the g and u states for every single electron in the molecule to see what the net result is. All right, so first of all, for one sigma g1, that would be g. For one sigma u1, that would be u for that electron, being in a g or a u state respectively. For one sigma g2, that's g times g, which is g. For one sigma u2, that would be u times u, which would be g. So for H2, for our hydrogen 2 molecule, that's one sigma g2. So it's g times g, or it's g. So the H2 term symbol we saw was a singlet sigma, and now we know it is a singlet sigma g. For He2+, plus, um, the He2 plus term symbol would be a doublet sigma, by similar logic for the H plus being a, being a sigma, but I needed something that was actually going to end up being a u, so I did this one. So I have He2 plus 1 sigma G2, 1 sigma U star 1. That's G times G for those two electrons, times U for that one. G times G times U gives U. G times G is G. G the resulting G times U gives U. So helium 2 plus is doublet sigma U. For boron 2, we have 1 sigma G2, 1 sigma U star 2, 2 sigma G2, 2 sigma u or 2 sigma u star 2 1 pi u 2 so this is g times g times u times u times g times g times u times u times u times u so if the number of u's is even we're going to get a g if the number of u's is odd we're going to get a u the result here is we have 6 u's and 4 g's so we're going to get a net resulting g so boron 2 has singlet delta G, triplet sigma G, and singlet sigma G. For F2+, plus, we saw 1 sigma G2, 1 sigma U star 2, 2 sigma G2, 2 sigma U star 2, 3 sigma G2, 1 pi U4, 1 pi G, 1 pi star G3. G times G times U, U, G, G, U, U, G, G, U, 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 four U's, and three G's, G, G, G. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight U's, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine G's. Since there are an even number of U's, this total result is going to be a G, giving us our final result for F2 plus a term symbol of doublet pi G.